Lymphogranuloma venereum, or LGV, is a sexually transmissible infection, an STI, caused by rare and aggressive strains of the bacteria that causes chlamydia, which is the chlamydia trachomatis. The strains that cause a lymphogranuloma venereum are chlamydia trachomatis L1, 2, 3, so L1, L2, and L3. Non-lymphogranuloma venereum genital chlamydia, which is the regular chlamydia that we hear about, is caused by the other serovars, which are D to K. Lymphogranuloma venereum, LGV, is a rare condition in Australia, but an increase has been observed in men who have sex with men, many of whom have also been HIV positive. These men usually present with symptoms of proctitis. LGV is common among men who have sex with men in North Europe and North America and is endemic in the general population in several tropical areas such as Southeast Asia and Southern Africa and India. The primary symptoms of lymphogranuloma venereum are a small ulcer or nodule on penis or anus that may go unnoticed and proctitis. Secondary symptoms are inguinofemoral lymph node swelling and or discharge which is called a bubo with or without erythema. The tertiary symptoms are chronic proctitis, fistulae, strictures and genital edema and scarring of vulva in females which is called isthiomene. The diagnosis of lymphogranuloma venereum can be done through a nucleic acid amplification test NAAT which is looking for chlamydia and that can be through a rectal swab or an ulcer swab. There's an increased rate of co-infection with gonorrhea, syphilis, hepatitis C, HIV, and patients with proctitis, we should always suspect herpes simplex virus. The management of lymphogranuloma venereum consists of the treatment of a doxycycline course of 100 mg orally twice a day for 21 days. We can also consider in patients with proctitis giving vasiclovir 500 mg orally twice a day for 7 days as herpes simplex virus can be the cause. We should also advise no sexual contact for 21 days whilst taking treatment and advise no sex with partners from the last th three months until the partners have been tested and treated if necessary. Contact tracing should be done back to three months if the patient is symptomatic and six months if the patient is asymptomatic. We should also provide the patient with fact sheet and we, this disease is not notifiable. And regarding inguinal bubos, drainage should be considered. And finally, for follow-up, we should review our patient in one week, which provides us with an opportunity to review results from initial consultation, confirm patient adherence with treatment and assess for symptom resolution. We can also confirm contact tracing procedures that have been undertaken or offer more contact tracing support and provide further sexual health education and prevention counselling. As for the tests of cure, tests of cure by chlamydia nucleic acid amplification test should occur at six weeks, which means three weeks after treatment completion. If TLC is positive, seek specialist advice. So that's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Please like this video, share it with your friends and subscribe to my channel and if you have any questions please leave them below. Thank you very much.